What does the judgment mean for Outer? Well, I think it's a big win uh, for the people of South Africa, um, but it really is a, uh, about stopping the tolling process from getting underway, whether it's in a month's time or not, and uh, in, uh, allowing the courts to have a full review of the process of our, of our argument to actually stop e tolling full stop. What is the argument that you're putting on the table? Well, that it is a very irrational process and cost an unnecessary cost to the motorist. If you have to pay two rands to collect one rand uh, for the for the infrastructure costs and the other one rand goes to administration, then there's something clearly wrong. And there are other ways of raising these funds for um, for road and uh, infrastructure upgrade, which mm. are far cheaper than than putting up elaborate gantry systems that costs billions of rands a year just to administer and manage, collect the funds, police. Um, it's just, uh, it's crazy. Is it the technology and the gantries that are the problem? Well, it's is not that only that, I think that's goes, the cheapest part. To, the gantries mm -hmm. and the technologies, is, it's the integration of all the information with businesses, with fleet owners, it's with getting individuals to go in and it's their time as well. This is another thing we must remember. You have to invest some of your time to go in and log on and register or go to the e-centers and buy your tags and then keep them topped up. Um, so it's quite onerous on the user. Uh, and then it's having a police force and running around and collecting all this money and there's going to be quite a lot of non-compliance mm -hmm. as we know there's going to be a lot of number plate cloning so there's some dispute resolution mechanisms required and 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 the more we looked at this process the more we saw how cumbersome and inefficient it was and we kept stepping back and saying a seven to eight cents addition to the uh, liter of petrol mm -hmm. is the is such a cheaper way of doing this why weren't you considering this and other mechanisms yeah would and, that uh, increase on the fuel price affect only Gauteng people or would you no, have pipeline no, no, no. nationally? It's a national thing because, as you know, Gauteng's roads are, are, are South Africa's roads. We mm -hmm. mustn't get into a situation where we start ring fencing roads for each city. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very important that, that we understand that our roads belong to all of South Africans mm -hmm. and, and that Gauteng in its own way has more than paid for these roads. We contribute immensely to the national fiscus. We get very a lot less back mm -hmm. and that's fine. We're contributing to the entire socioeconomic investment in this country yeah uh, but to I'm, start I'm just thinking now words. I mean I went to Umtata recently and there's many potholes there mm. now somebody sitting in Umtata might be thinking okay so if I pay eight cents a litre extra for mm -hmm. better roads in Gauteng when I sit here and I'm confronted with toll road with yeah. with potholes then what well uh, I think what you're asking is a, is a relook at the whole efficiency um, of, of our national roads full stop you know we are contributing already just under two rand to the fuel levy mm -hmm. uh, one rand 98 cents uh, that is billions of rands a year, and we need to make sure that that money is being put to good use. I mm -hmm. think there has been a backlog in, in road infrastructure maintenance, and that needs to be sorted out. So there's a lot of question marks just in general around what is being done with the license fee money you pay, which, which fixes up the local roads uh, in, in those various areas, with the long distance tolling routes money, um, and, and the national fiscus also needs to chip into to the national road process. So. Yeah, so, so what's the next course of action now with the interdict? Well, there's two, there's two ways that this can go now. Mm -hmm. the, if we're going to continue to fight, then, then there's, the courts will be, uh, have to set up and, and we will be taking the matter further for, for the second part of the application. Um, but we're hoping that this might, be, um, they might, this might gender a new look and a new stance by government to say, okay, let us have a look and let us listen to what the people are actually saying and, and maybe do this differently. I think that would be a very wise move on behalf of government. And what sense have you received from government from Sandral uh, up to this point? No, nothing at this stage. It's, yeah. still, it's still a bit of a fight. Is it correct you uh, mobilizing financial support from the public? Yeah, look, I mean, this is very costly mm -hmm. and the public have indicated a keen interest to get involved in supporting the, uh, the, the, the cause. And so we will have to go to the public and other business and other associations to help us defend this if we have to defend it in court going forward. Yeah. So we will be putting forward a very focused strategy to, to raise funds. When you say it's costly, how much has it cost you and how have you funded well, it up to now? Well, up to now, the Savrala members, the, that's the South African Vehicle Renting and Leasing Association members, have dug into their pockets and put money for this court case. It's mm -hmm. cost us um, just under a couple of million rand. And, um, under two million. Yeah. Yeah. And and look, that's that's for all the work and and, and legwork right up until the the court case itself, and then the senior counsellors. Uh, it's not cheap to yeah. to go and fight these battles. And what do you take out of this experience? I just want to read a tweet by Zolin Zimbabwe. He says, 
People United will never be defeated. Well done for uniting, irrespective of other usual differences. You also said you appreciate the support of the people uh, th that was given. What, well, what do you take out of this? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's just overwhelming, but this is a cause for the people. This is not about ATA. This is not about any organizations. This mm. is about defending the rights of the people and making sure that we do not have to overpay and oversubscribe. Uh, we, we work hard for our money and, um, and we cannot afford additional costs of this nature. All right, let's look at some of the messages that have come through on Twitter. Some chains has already hiked their prices in anticipation of e-tolling. I bet they will not bring these down. Uh, is that correct? Do you Have uh, you seen that in the research that you've done? No, I think people were getting ready to push their prices up. Some had already priced it in. Uh, it's a free market system. Those who've priced it in, We'll have to compete with those who haven't, and it'll come back down again. Yeah. This cost. Are we going to pay 15 rand per litre for petrol to subsidise Sandro's debt? No, not at all. Mm. Not at all. In fact, you know, the recent 20 cents increase in petrol more than covers the costs of e-tolling. So we're hoping that the government takes this money that they're getting from the fuel levy as it is without having to increase fuel. Yeah. And then in regards to e-tolling, what will happen to the stations they built? Well, we believe that they can put them to good use. You know, the number plate recognition systems in those gantries can be used for crime prevention, detection, looking for stolen vehicles, <laughs> as well as average speed monitoring on the highway. So they needn't go to waste. Yeah, yeah. Just looking at, at where things have come to now, and government keeps on saying, you know, the country's credibility is going to be undermined, mm. rating agencies and that mm. kind of thing. From the work you've done, are you, are you getting that kind of feedback? No, look, I, I sense that that's not the case. In fact, we believe that the country's ratings do become undermined and start to go down when government has an angry, intense relationship with its citizens. Mm -hmm. And I think they need to take heed of that. If we can work this out together with our authorities and the people can be happy, I think our ratings will go up. So yeah. I don't believe that this is going to negatively impact on our ratings. What about promises made and promises not fulfilled, well, we delayed to, and, and we payments to, that have to be made? Unfortunately, our authorities have put us in that predicament and, and we, the country, and so we, the people of South Africa, are going to have to pay those debts, unfortunately, mm. out of our taxes. But it will ensure that government thinks twice before it goes down this road going forward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Joining us this okay. morning, Wayne Divanacha is chair of AUTA. Thank, Thank you, you very yeah. much for your Thank time you this very morning. All right.